dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter One. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. to the side suspiciously. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Just some dusty knickknacks. Grant had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. fabric. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. she moved in was an old hutch. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. 
She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. everyone involved. Lucas' chance to sell his alibi. Nailed it. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. for the day. The best lies are built on truth. Easy. is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. All's well that ends well. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary.
Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was, a tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard.
Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? Luca tied a sh what fish could re Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. The boys had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Rolo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Lucas' winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
tied a small magnet to the line. Fishing with the law of attraction. Wilder ran the local paper of record. The Beacon Beacon. could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. <laughs> oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? <laughs> froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home.
In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. much, if you ask me. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand.
a promise Gran regretted the second it was made. The phone booth was brand new, part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do, so that he could rule out that option. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer building. served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. Diseased. It flowed slowly into the woods. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. The sound of footsteps grew louder. door knocked Luca to the ground. 
Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. <laughs> Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress Valentine.
As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. under the weight of the bag. Ooh. 
Rollo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Rollo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough! Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass! Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Deacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend 